Hi folks, Bryony Thomas here. Um, so, I'm uh, doing this session today on, um, on the use of language in marketing and really understanding um, the power of the way we talk about marketing, the way that we talk about our customers internally and the impact that has on the way that we behave externally. So um, I, it won't come as a, uh, so lots of marketers talk about language, don't they? They talk about um, the power of um, of the words that we use and making sure that we use compelling language that draws people in and takes people to a call to action and all that good stuff. And um, I agree with all of that, and it, but it's not what I want to talk about. Uh, and so in many ways, it's exactly that that I find um, quite two-faced. So when you... Um, when you talk to most marketers about copywriting and about your brand tone of voice and about the the way that your imagery, et cetera, appears in the outside world, they talk very much about understanding humanity. And yet, and yet, behind closed doors, people talk about um, their customers in quite different ways. Um, there's a two-facedness. So you might be sitting and doing some copywriting about the human being um, that you're really, you know, you've got your your avatar and you've worked out a profile and you're, you're choosing language that's really going to appeal to them as a human being. And yet you're talking them about them as a target. And you're talking about them as someone whose data you're going to capture um, in a campaign and then uh, and then lock them into your data product. Um, so it's really interesting that there's a, a a two-sidedness to the way that people speak about marketing. There's um, what people say in the outside world. So, you know, using human, brilliant tone of voice to draw people in. And then there's um, the language of marketing in terms of the jargon that is really dehumanizing. So I have um, I have a real problem. Uh, I have a bee in my bonnet about dehumanizing language in marketing. And um, the, the sorts of words I'm, I'm talking about are target audience, um, data capture, uh, a structural lock-in or a tie-in or a tripwire. Um, there are all sorts of words used as jargonistic terms in marketing, which if you dissect them to have a think about would you do that to a human being would you capture a human being and lock them in um, you'd get arrested um, and the reason why I find this terminology quite difficult is quite apart from the fact that it's just not very nice um, is that I think it does a number of things to undermine the long-term effectiveness of your marketing so first of all um, I think it's worth considering that as marketers, as professionals, as we, if we use this sort of language, is it any wonder that the industry um, is considered to be quite manipulative? You know, marketers are syn marketing is synonymous with manipulation. Marketing um, and marketers are considered, um, you know, to be people who use trickery, manipulation, um, and their understanding of psychology to um, to kind of trick people into into parting with their money. So, is it any wonder, therefore, that we're perhaps not um, taken as seriously in the boardroom as other as other um, disciplines? perhaps. So certainly when I um, introduce myself as someone in marketing and the, I'm talking to someone who perhaps isn't a marketer, um, there's this underlying feeling that marketers, um, marketing equals manipulation in some way. Um, so I do, I think that uh, there's this two-facedness in, um, in the way that we interact with uh, with marketing language. We talk about how um, to be really human uh, in copywriting and yet behind closed doors, we don't talk about human beings, we talk about targets, um, our target audience, and we're gonna capture their data. And that, that two-facedness um, reduces, I think, the respectability of the profession. But more than that, I think it actually degrades um, the true professionalism of the profession. It degrades our behavior. And um, I think if you, you know, if you look at sociology, if we take lessons from sociology and look at the use of dehumanizing language in other contexts, dehumanizing language um, usually precedes 
kind of unhuman acts. So if you're able to dehumanize the subject of what you're talking about, then you're able to do things to them that you wouldn't do to a human being. And um, I genuinely believe that using dehumanizing language in business and in marketing leads businesses to treat customers in ways um, that that they wouldn't a, a human being in their real life. They will do manipulative things. So over time, by using the language like a target and a tripwire and data capture, um, then you stop thinking about your customers as, as human beings. And in fact, you you often um, use the you start to see them almost as cannon fodder. You know, you just need to, and this is what leads people into high volume marketing that um, that kind of burns through a list. And this is, these are phrases I use. I need enough leads so that I can do some, I can burn burn through them. What do you want to burn through them for? Um, why don't you just want to talk, to, talk to them as human beings? And even if they're not right, give them a respectful um, exit from the relationship. So, um I, I get quite upset about the two-facedness of marketing language. So that in 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 kind of the front-facing language, we talk, we take time and energy to talk to people as human beings, and yet behind closed doors, marketers often use terminology like target audience and campaign and data capture that is de really dehumanising. Um, yet, yeah, Ros, completely agree with you um, that it's about making sure that uh, you work with the right kind of people, and it's so true that. Um, we need to find ways of speaking to people um, and, and choosing who we work with. And so uh, sometimes for me, it's a it's a red flag. You know, if someone is using that sort of language, it can be a red flag. But I, I can't um, rule everybody out who uses that sort of language because it's it's ubiquitous. You know, I, I have to try really hard not to use the language myself because it is ingrained in our industry. And so actually it's about, first of all, recognizing it and then choosing um, different words, because I do think that words um, lead to behavior. So I think that the two-faced language um, degrades uh, your true sense of your customers as human beings. I think it reduces the uh, perception of professionalism um, in, uh, in the marketing um, industry. And um, I also think that it reduces the energy you have in your business. So um, anyone who's ever done kind of self-development and worked on their own uh, energy and motivation will know that people talk about your negative self-talk. So you, the voice inside your head and, and um, whether you're nice to yourself or not. And um, so here he goes. If you're not very nice to yourself inside your own head, then you won't uh, you won't be positive and motivated um, in the world. And I think this follows through. I think this follows through into the energy of your business. So I think if you speak negatively or use um, dehumanizing terminology in your marketing strategy meetings, I think that's energy sapping. I think using dehumanizing language about the lifeblood of your business, i.e. the customers, um, uh, you know, the people um, in your business, is really de-energizing. Um, and so actually to you know, talk about customers as customers rather than targets, I think means that you'll think about them as customers um, rather than kind of disposable, burnable leads. Um, and uh, I think it will energize your business a lot more. So choosing your language, I think, um, will absolutely make a difference to how you behave within your business, internally and externally. Um, Completely agree with you, William. Thank you. I mean, language is um, is so important. And William there talks about unconscious bias. So important. And I think, um, you know, there's there's a thing around language in all sorts of businesses, but I, I in industries. But I think marketing has a real language problem. And I think the problem is a barrier to um, treating customers with uh, with real respect. So I think it's um, it's two faced. It's inconsistent. It reduces the professionalism of marketers. Um, it saps the energy of your business because not only is um, negative language energy sapping in terms of um, using negative language creates negative atmosphere, uh, creates negative behavior, but also I think being inconsistent, being incongruent saps energy. So if you use um, uh, you know, your tone of voice, your official tone of voice is friendly and really human and down to earth. And then you go into a board meeting and say, you know, how are we going to 
How are we going to target these people and capture their data? And what structural lock-ins can we put on our products? There is an incongruency in that, which I believe saps your energy, because I think being inconsistent um, is, uh, we know in our own minds when there's a tension. And I think the tension that, um, that, that is in this industry between front-facing language uh, as in our tone of voice, and then how we talk about marketing um, behind closed doors or in jargon or in our in our marketing books and marketing manuals. I think that tension is energy sapping for your business and for your organization. I also think that if we think about um, people often uh, look at marketing, um, it's analogous with with human relationships. And that's because they are human relationships and um, the relationships between your customer and your business are that they are human relationships. And um, I think uh, in if you use short term language, so there's almost like an objectification um of of potential customers, you know, that you're going to burn through them, you can do a quick hit, a campaign. Um, and I think if you went out um, looking for a, a lifelong partner with that sort of attitude, you probably wouldn't be very lucky on the dating front. And I think that um, kind of short term, objectified, dehumanized language uh, within an organization leads to short term relationships um, with your customers. So, you know, in the long term, I also think the language isn't very good for your bottom line because you're much better off to create long term, high value relationships. And I believe that long term, high value relationships come from um, truly treating people with respect. And if you use disrespectful, dehumanizing language behind closed doors, I don't think it's I think there's a, it's less likely that you'll truly create long term uh, relationships with your customers. Um, and I just think that it's worth having a think about the words that you use. It's worth having a just a little mental note to uh, have a look at the terminology you have on your sales reports, have a look at the terminology you have in your marketing plan um, and see whether you're using any of the words that if they were applied to you as a human being in a different context that you wouldn't like. Because if you wouldn't like to be called it yourself, then perhaps, you know, don't don't say it about your customers. Um, so, it, you know, it means it means a lot to me. It means a lot to me. And I and I do think that um, over time it degrades the way that we behave in business and it perpetuates the idea that business and um, society are somehow separate. And I believe that business truly can be a force for good. And I think if we take some time to look and consider and change the language that we use in business and particularly in marketing, um, I think we could make a massive shift in the culture of the organizations that we create, which means the jobs that most people have, which means the relationships they have not only at work, um, with the businesses that they do, uh, that they do, do business with. I just think it can have a massive impact. And I think um, low grade degradation, dehumanization through business language is, is a problem for our society. Um, and I do think that, you know, values uh, manifest in words, words manifest in behavior. Uh, and so it's time really to have a good think about the language that we use. So um, a couple of years ago, I put together a list of words that I'm, that I'm not a big fan of um, and came up with different words. So if you go to watertypemarketing.com forward slash language, um, you can download those words. And um, for each word that I found, unhelpful I, I found a different word and uh, there are a list of 22 so I'm going to do a series of um, live videos I won't promise to do it every day but I'll do a series of live videos and I'm going to go through each one of those words and explain to you how I think it's unhelpful and what word might be more helpful and um, if you have some words if you have words that you see being used in marketing and in business that you think could be um, could be better or you find slightly uncomfortable um, shout let me know, um, comment on the words that you see used in business that you find um, uncomfortable. And I'll see if I can find a better one. Let's let's discuss it, because I think that if we really got behind using respectful, decent, humanizing language in business, then we could create respectful, decent, humanizing businesses. That's what I think. Cheers.